When it comes to getting more faders or buttons to control your lighting console, there often isn't a better option than using MIDI controllers. Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com. MIDI controllers control lighting consoles and lighting software using a basic protocol called MIDI, which is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Originally designed for people playing music, keyboard synthesizers, and stuff like that, it now has made its way into the lighting world, uh, mostly due to the fact that you can pick up MIDI controllers like these ones I have in front of me, and many more, very inexpensively. Uh, the people who work for manufacturers tell me that this is because, simply put, the music market, musicians and pro audio, is much bigger than the lighting market. And so you're able to buy these kind of things really inexpensively, get faders, get buttons, get knobs, for a lot less than it would often cost to get a lighting console wing. Now, if you're looking for how to map a, a MIDI controller to your lighting console, I've got a video right here that's going to show you exactly how to do that and get you started. And i got to tell you, there's never been a more MIDI-friendly time in lighting. Whether you're using a big piece of PC software that supports MIDI out of the box, or maybe you're using a console with a device called a Bohm box, or Ricardo Diaz's Show Cockpit software, which allows you to interface many lighting consoles through their PC programs with MIDI controllers. But even if you know you want to use a MIDI controller, what MIDI controller should you buy to work with lighting? In this video, that's going to be my focus. I want to show you some different options for MIDI controllers and really talk about how they affect you in lighting because at the end of the day, you don't just want cheap, junky faders. You want something that's going to help you run a great show. And so, that's why I'm going to show you both here, right in front of me, and I'll pop some images up on the screen of some of my favorite MIDI controllers and, and really talk through why I like them and, and why they might be a great choice for you. Now, when you're picking out a MIDI controller, before we even delve into brands or models of controllers, we got to talk about what's important to you, okay? When you're working with MIDI controllers, you're really going to have three main types of control. And I've got this APC40 here from Akai to, to show you that, okay? You're going to have faders, right? They may be vertical like this or horizontal like this. You're going to have buttons. Most of the time on a MIDI controller, this is going to be a momentary, a, a non-latching button where you just press it and release it. You're also going to have knobs or encoder wheels which by definition is a knob that spins endlessly to be able to control different parameters of your lights. So as you buy your first MIDI controller or are looking to buy, you want to go ahead and think about your lighting software or your control package and what you need more of. Maybe you're just on the screen and you've got buttons but you don't have any faders. Well, then you'd probably prioritize buying some faders. Maybe you've got a console with faders, but you would like a bank of buttons like this APC40 has to be able to put color combos, positions, gobos, and, and you would want something with maybe just buttons or mostly buttons. Maybe your console supports the ability to map programming controls like pan and tilt and color to encoder wheels but you don't have any on your console. That's where a MIDI controller could come in. And so even before you start looking at buying a MIDI controller, you want to really look at what your needs are. Okay, what do you need most? Because if you have a, a console that's got 200 faders on it, it's probably pointless to buy a MIDI controller with 10 faders on it. You might want something with a lot of buttons instead so that in a small area you can get a grid of control of all these different cues in your controller. Vice versa, 
if you have on-screen buttons or you have a lot of buttons on your lighting console already, you might want to add more faders, okay? So when we think about types of MIDI controllers, there's really uh, just a couple main types. And the first is the keyboard style controller. Pictured here, the keyboard style controller is what it sounds like. It's a MIDI keyboard. It's often what people go to, what they think about when they think MIDI controller. Designed, of course, for, you know, pianists and keyboardists. These can work okay for lighting. Now, I don't have any personally right now. I've um, sold them off because, truth be told, I don't find them to be super useful for lighting. A lot of times, um, unless you get like a really nice keyboard with some weighted keys or at least semi-weighted, the, the keys feel really cheap and they just don't have a good feel to the press of them, in my mind. And while that might seem kind of snobberish or kind of like, well, David, you know, you're just, you know, fancy and, and you can care about that kind of stuff. Um, I would rather have the button style of something like this APC40 or this Korg Nano Control where the buttons have a good feel to them. It's easy to tell when I've pressed the button versus when I've not. With those inexpensive keyboards, oftentimes you can kind of press halfway and it won't quite trigger, or maybe it'll trigger before you thought it would, and it's hard to get exact precise timing. Now, if you got one laying around, you know, hook it up to your lighting console, see what you think. But I'm generally in the place where I don't recommend those controllers to people because I just haven't found them to be of as much value as other controllers. So we've got keyboard type controllers. Next, we've got button type controllers. A really popular one is the Novation Launchpad series. They can be bought very inexpensively and they simply offer a grid of buttons and these button type controllers are generally optimized for Ableton Live. So just like this APC40, you're going to get yourself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buttons tall and one, two, three, four, five, six buttons deep. Okay, maybe more. And you're going to be able to put a lot of things on these. So what I like to do, as I mentioned before, with button type controllers is I like to put anything on there that I don't need a linear or fader type control of, okay? So I think of things like color combinations for my lights, right? I don't need to fade in a color combination at 50% usually. That's just not something I do. I, I want the color combination and I want it when I press the button. Similarly, gobos in lights, things like prisms, things like even positions. Oftentimes, I, I don't want a static position for my moving lights. I, I don't need to bring that in halfway most of the time. I'd rather just put a bunch of them on a button. I'd rather have 10 buttons than one fader in that situation. Now, thinking of faders, the next type of MIDI controller we've got is the fader type. This guy here is a Korg Nano Control 2. Very popular and very inexpensive. These guys are like 70 bucks, I think. These faders are kind of cheap, so, you know, I probably wouldn't use them for fading up and down on a high-end corporate show. But when you just need to bring in and out some simple effects, you're running live music, you want to control some groups of lights, overall intensity maybe, these are a great option. They're also kind of built with playback in mind, so you can map it so that next to each button, next to each fader rather, the three buttons that are on the controller are going to, you know, maybe be your, your play, pause, go. And so that's really helpful as well. This guy, the Korg Nano Control's got eight faders and then eight knobs at the top, which are actually technically faders because they don't spin endlessly like an encoder wheel, okay? So these guys are inexpensive, they work well, and you can put them in a bag or a backpack because they're really small. So I often recommend these. Um, the next type of controller really is a hybrid type. As I've mentioned a few times here, we've got the Korg, uh, not the Korg, the Akai APC40. This is the old one. They use the, they sell the Mark II now, but it's very similar in function. It's got pretty much the same amount of stuff on it, just a little bit different layout. And what I love about these guys is 
This is like a full console for me. I've got faders, and they're okay. They're pretty decent faders. They're higher quality than the Nano Control, but not as high quality as real faders on a lighting console, per se. And um, above, above these bottom faders, of course, I've got three buttons, which is great for like a go back release or go pause stop, whatever your console has. And then I've got this really great button grip. Now, this is basically uh, a Akai APC-20, this side, the button grid and faders. And then this side, the APC-40 side that the APC-40 only has, is a whole lot of knobs. And I like that for controlling lots of parameters of my lights or putting different cues on. I've got a number of buttons here. You see, I've labeled them with a label maker. And I've got a bunch of programming keys on these. And so these things are hard to beat if you've got a console that's MIDI friendly. They're pretty inexpensive as well. Um, the biggest con being that there, there's no motorized faders. So what do you get if you want motorized faders? Well, my pick is the Behringer stuff, okay? Now, I remember I was first turned on to this from a video that's at least 10, 15 years old now, um, where the 9 inch nails. Uh, LD talked about his rig, which he was using a Martin console at the time, actually what's now turned into Onyx. And what he did was he said, you know, hey, I can get this Behringer BCF 2000. Um, that was a really popular model that's since been discontinued. That's got about 10 faders on it. I think it's got nine and it's got some knobs and a bunch of buttons, but they're motorized faders. He says, you know, I could just carry one of these with me, run my show with it, maybe carry a backup on stage. But then anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country that I happen to be, if this thing breaks, I can go to a music store and buy one. And that's the best thing about a MIDI controller and the best thing about these Behringer units because they're so popular. Now, the new one, the new BCF, is the Behringer X-Touch Compact. And this guy works great for lighting. I love this thing. It's got... Uh, the same faders, I believe, as the X32 console, so they're, you know, an okay fader. They're pretty good. They have a lot nicer feel to them than these cheaper ones. They're motorized. And it's also got a variety of knobs on it and a few buttons. What I often like to do with these is, on the faders, I'll go ahead and use those as my, my regular cues. And then in my console, I'll use the knobs at the top as inhibitors or as basically submasters to control the maximum level of various lights but you can use it for whatever you want and then once we get through that type that's pretty much all the types of midi controllers you're gonna find out there for all of my picks of the midi controllers that i've found to be the best most available and cost efficient check out the links below i've got links to all of them where you can buy them where you can check out more about them and then be sure to check my article and my video on Learn Stage Lighting about how to map these MIDI controllers to your lighting console. I'm going to walk you through exactly what to do there. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube so that you don't miss my next video. And if you click that bell, you'll be notified when it comes out. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video here on Learn Stage Lighting.